Okay. Make the camera not shake and move. Gonna do a little update on making these little box bags. And these could actually be made out of lighter weight cardstock or even patterned cardstock. This is the template. It's a half a sheet of cardstock, so it's five and a half by eight and a half inch piece. And you're going to score it at two and three quarters at four inches, at six and three quarters, and eight inches. Then at three and three eighths and seven and three eighths, come back and only score it down about one inch. That's all you need just to kind of give you the, the fold to push that in on the sides. Then turn it and score it at one and a quarter inches. See if I can get it all to show. One and a quarter inches. And then I just kind of spaced my holes at a half inch down from the top and about seven eighths of an inch over from each side panel. And then just gave myself a little idea of where the, the hole placement needed to be. Then you're going to remove this part of your glue tab. Remember to cut your little angle here and your angle here. But if you will go back and on the back side, I work from the back side because I can see the little humped line better. If you will go back and cut away each of those humped lines, and this is what you're going to be left with. See, you've removed those. When you fold this up, you're going to have a smoother fold on your piece. So this is my little cutout template that I've got ready and I thought I would show how I do just a very simple ink dragging technique as a way of creating a background that is super simple and easy and you can do this with a variety of different inks I like the distress inks I like to use I've done it with archival inks and then just your regular dye based inks and all I basically do let's see let's start at this end is just drag the ink pad one direction with one color and then I take another color and drag across it and it ooh, it kind of creates a my ink pads are very dry. They need to be re-inked. But because I do a lot of this stuff, I don't like them when they're really juicy. So this is actually better when they're a little dry. Then once I've got it to this point, it actually makes just a really pretty random background. Now you can do anything with this. You can stamp over it. You can do even other techniques. One of the things I like to do, I love this little dotted background stamp. And this one just happens to be from Stampin' Up. But I've had it for so many years, I just keep using it because I like it. And then I just take and kind of stamp because the little dots are irregular anyway. So, if you just stamp little rows of them until you fill up your background, then I'll show you what how I used a similar size stamp and did one of the other pieces. I know y'all would think I would have that ink pad over on this side, but there's so much junk on the other side of the table. It's hard to get to it. This is mostly just to fill this in. Okay, so that, and this is my permanent black ink. It's the ink that I use for stamping things, especially if I'm going to use a wet medium to color them in. But I also did, this was done with a similar, similar technique, only I just used a sponge and put the brown ink on. Then I actually used this little background stamp here and just stamped it randomly See, I think on this one, I just did the front and the bottom tab, since those were the ones that were going to show the most. But that was the little, and it looks like a little swatch of, I don't know, maybe cheesecloth or something. 
and then I used that same dot pattern when I colored my front using the blue and the green inks. Then I went back and I added dots on the blue part and dots on the green part. And then the rest of the box was just, this was where I drug the, I think it was aged paper or old paper, whatever that color of distress ink is. Then this one I just stamped on the front and the back. This is, I think, plaid flannel. I'm not really sure the name of the stamp, but it's from that Fun Stamper's Journey. But I just loved that um, stamped image, so I had to have it. And then you just want to fold and burnish. Now, in the real world when I do this, I would actually let this... I would set it to the side and let it dry or not work with it till the next day because the ink does dampen the cardstock. But, because I want to show y'all the little no-knot bow for those that don't know how to do it. So, get that in place and then I like to fold it back the other direction and give it a good burnish and then it doesn't really matter which one is your front and back as far as that part goes you just decide whichever one is your front you want it to be the last tab that folds in so we're just going to call this one the front so I'm actually going to have it away from me and I'm going to fold the little sides in and put a little bit of glue there and I like to try to do my my bottom quickly so I can get all the glue put on and then set it up and just press everything from the inside with the bone folder and then it's all in there. Okay, then to do the no-knot bow, and if you want your, your sides to crease down further, that's going to be up to you. I only worried about having the top and it just made that a little more flush and even and just because I'm kind of anal, I had to do it that way. So, what you're going to do, and I tried to, to cut little pointed pieces of ribbon, so it would might make it a little easier, but let's see. Let's go old school. This is how I learned to do this, and this is how I still do it a lot of times. Just a big-eyed needle, and go... Which one is my front? Now I have to make sure I have this right. Okay. Bear with me a second because I... Okay, I go in this way. No, here we go. Uh, every time I do this, I have to re-remember how to do it. So once you've got that through... Is this is the yeah, this is the front of my box, and then you want your tails as even as you can get them, and because I'm not going to struggle to try to poke this through, I have used a small crochet hook and pulled the ribbon through, but even sometimes that can be a pain. And then you just, but you don't want to pierce your ribbon when you use the the um needle to do this. And pull it back through on one side and come on and then pull it oops go from the back to the front without stabbing the ribbon and then just trim it off to wherever you want it or need it. And there's your little flat no-knot bow that can tie your bag closed, but you haven't made it so permanent that you can't go back and undo it, and then the bag could, the ribbon could still be put back through the holes in the box. So anyway, that's just how easy that part was. Now, I wanna show y'all one other quick little thing. And oh, I did it on this little frame this morning see my little squares of stamped color and all this was was from a package of little foam square shapes from the Dollar Tree store that were over there like where the school stuff and 
kids learning aids and it was like I don't know I think there was like what is where's the package get it and I'll show it to you counting blocks foam squares counting blocks and there's 50 in the package and it didn't matter to me what colors they were because I was buying them for stamping with anyway and we used to do this with stamps and it was called shadow stamping and you just start a section of your little squares and then I flipped it over so I would have and I washed this one a while ago so it would be clean from where I had done the purple and the the yellow together and then you just stamp your squares oops I forgot a green one down here and then all I did was took that background stamp and then just stamped right over the top of that and you've created instant background paper so how easy and how cool is that so if you can get these or you can make them or you might even have little squares that you can just make little shapes like that out of and so y'all give it a shot see what you can come up with thanks